Hi everybody, Tom from farfaraway.org. My ninja shopper Stu uh, sent this over uh, from Gen Con. So this is Callus, the new uh, Legion of Everblight Warlock. Uh, as you can see, the, the model's fairly straightforward. So you've got the the main piece, so it's the head, torso, legs. Uh, the arms then are comes a separate piece. Uh, two shoulder pads and then the, the spikes that go down his back. So I'm going to assemble them and paint them up over the next couple of days and do a tutorial along the way. Um, you see I'm going to use the under painting technique. Uh, not quite the same way that, that Matti Pietro has been talking about it in No Quarter, um, but it's going to be quite similar so I'll, I'll talk it through step by step. So here's the assembled model. Very straightforward to assemble uh, with so few parts. Um, I didn't bother pinning anything. Uh, it should be robust enough. Uh, I find most of the time it's only very heavy components that really need to be pinned. So there he is. Some of the filing around the sword was fine. I mean, it was a very well molded model, uh, but some of the, the mold lines are just tricky to get to with a, a hand file. So I possibly should have broken out the Dremel for some of the bits. But otherwise, it's fairly easy to clean and assemble. Possibly could do with a small bit of green stuff in between that rear shoulder pad and the arm, but again, I think it's probably okay once the paint goes onto it. Okay, so the next step is to prime it. I'm going to prime it white, um, but equally, you could prime it in grey uh, for this technique. So here's the primed model. Uh, as you can see, I used a white primer, and that's the uh, Games Workshop's uh, Skull White Spray. Um, I have to say I quite like it as, as primers go. It's, it's expensive, but it's really nice, very fine particles, and covers really, really well. Uh, I used uh, masking tape around the edge of the base just to, to keep it black, just it saves the amount of painting I'll have to do later on. So, a good, even coat. Uh, I'll probably start at the face. Um, it'll be a very light blue colour in there. Uh, and then I'll do the main bulk of the undercoat and or the underpainting, so it'll be uh, greys and probably browns on, on the spikes in the back here. I decided to work on the face first. So here you can see, and um, this will be pretty close to the final face. I might uh, add a, an additional white highlight just on the kind of tip of the nose and top of the lips. Um, the base colour for this is Space Wolves Grey. Uh, which one of the, the GW paints. Uh, that was mixed with water and some glaze medium as well, just to let it flow, because you want to bring out the natural highlight of the, the white undercoat. Uh, so it was probably two parts Space Wolves Grey to one part water, one part glaze medium, and uh, work that in. Then added a little bit of white to that base, uh, just to add highlights on the cheeks and on the nose. The eyes then are just ice blue. Um, watered slightly and then painted in with a small brush and then the whole lot was washed with a very watered down azimuth blue so probably two parts water one part azimuth blue um, probably slightly less water just where trying to get between the lips just to kind of make darken it up ever so slightly this color is going to feature quite a lot when I do the the rest of the painting here he is after the initial underpainting coat um, so you can see what I've done is I've applied a lot of grey to the areas that will be metallic and blue later on. Now that's only the start. I'm going to uh, dry brush these up, uh, probably directionally, just to get them a little bit lighter. But this is very simple to do. So the last shot we saw, he was white in all of these areas. So all I did was use some watered down Adeptus grey again with glazed medium. And that was quite watery, so it was probably uh, one part of Adeptus grey to... Uh, one part water, one part uh, glaze medium, and that gives you this kind of effect. Uh, just be careful, don't overuse the glaze medium because it, it does slow the drying time. On the spikes coming down the back here, um, that's watered down graveyard earth. Again, you get some of the natural highlight coming through because you're using a watered down colour. Um, so neither of these are final. The, the brown area will be darkened a little bit and all of these areas will have some form of pigmentation put on them. Um, but the next step will be to dry brush it up, so uh, that's what I'll start doing. Quick bit of dry brushing has them uh, highlighted up, so we're still just working with the greys at the moment. 
but some of those highlights are almost up to white. Hopefully that comes out on the camera. So the next step will be to start inking. And to do those highlights, I just again used uh, two GW paints, so Fortress Grey, which is the lighter side of medium grey, um, was the start of the highlights, and then kept progressively adding white into that. Um, but it's a really quick step, I mean the dry brushing is really quite quite fast, it's a, a large brush, you just be careful you don't go over detail like the face or the spikes down his back, but everything else gets the, the brushing. And um, from a directionality perspective, um, kept dry brushing uh, in a downwards direction, so you're picking out the, the upper detail. Okay, so the next step is probably to work on this uh, cloak here that's running around the base. So on the Privateer Press model uh, that they've painted, it's uh, kind of a, a bluish colour, so I'll use Yazerman Blue to, to ink that in. Here's the model after a little bit of washing. So you can see I put the Azerman blue colour on this area. Uh, also added into a slightly watered down mix of it into some of the armour plates. Just to pick out some of the recesses, I also used Bada Black in on that area. And Bada Black was also applied to the brown spikes. So I'm not quite sure how I'm going to go about the metals next, but I'll figure it out for the next batch of video. And um, just for reference, they're the, the two colours that we use at this stage. Primarily this one. I usually water it down slightly. Okay, so I got most of the metallics on. Uh, started with bulk and metal mixed through with a bit of uh, shadow grey, and. I decided to actually dry brush the grey areas, I didn't want to lose the nice shading I gotten. Um, then worked through to adding Mithril Silver to that, a uh, bit of Ultramarines Blue to kind of lighten the blue um, as part of those highlights, and then eventually a bit of Skull White. So hopefully this will show up on the camera, um, but there's kind of a metallic edge to, to everything now. So it's quite simple, there's uh, a couple of small things to finish, I want to finish the, the belt on the back there. Um, I think I also need to maybe very lightly wash the model again, um, just to pick out some of the recesses. Um, might do that with a kind of the blue colour mixed with a bit of black, um, but he's pretty much finished. So here's the final model. Uh, a few touch-ups, so yeah, I did like I planned. I got a Bada Black and Azerman Blue, um, mixed them um, almost 50-50 and then quite a lot of water and added that down to the model. Then I picked up some Mitchell Silver and just started doing very high edge highlights uh, to pick things up. Um, the chains that are come down here, they got a, a wash with the Devlin Mud and then were picked out um, again with the Mitchell Silver. So I think uh, he's turned out quite well. The belt is just bestial brown uh, with a wash of Devlin mud across it, so you know, fairly simple stuff. But I think he's turned out quite well. Uh, hopefully the camera picks up the detail. I may darken the inside of the shoulder pads, but so far they've had a few washes of Bada Black just to darken them down a bit, but maybe yeah, black ink might be more appropriate. But I'm happy enough, I just need to finish up his base and he'll be ready to lead lots of infantry to their uh, death and then resurrection as Incubi. Thanks for watching everybody.